SpaceX is on the cusp of landing its Starship rocket into orbit for the very first time. This event is nothing short of historic and surpasses even the monumental space achievements of 1969. So, how do you feel now? Personally, I am in a tizzy of anticipation. So, when and how exactly will this happen? And will SpaceX officially reveal Starship's launch date and timeline? Find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. But before we start, we want to share a personal goal with you. For the past few months, we've been eagerly anticipating the moment when our channel would hit 100,000 subscribers, coinciding with the launch of the Starship. Actually, we are so close to achieving this milestone with almost 96,000 subscribers now. So to all those who have already subscribed to our channel, thank you for your support and encouragement. And for those who are new to our channel, we urge you to hit that subscribe button. Achieving this milestone will serve as a tremendous inspiration for us to keep improving and delivering top-notch content to our viewers. Now let's dive right in. We have had a lot of updates on Starship over the past few days, but SpaceX recently shared details about this on the company's website. They're actually serious. The launch is planned for April 17th. Meanwhile, no Starship launch rehearsal is planned this week anymore. All the road closures this week are canceled, according to the site. Teams are focused on launch readiness ahead of Starship's first integrated flight test as soon as next week pending regulatory approval. No launch rehearsal this week, the company tweeted. The official Starship Integrated Flight Test mission profile shows Booster 7, Ship 24 liftoff, stage separation, Ship 24 RFX ignition, booster flip maneuver, which looks like a 360 degree rotation here, boost back burn, and we have water landing, same as future booster catching. On the other side, Ship 24, re-entry, and water splashdown. Notably, SpaceX said that the team will not attempt a vertical landing of Starship or a catch of the Super Heavy booster for the upcoming first flight test. To date, multiple successful suborbital flight tests of the Starship upper stage have been conducted from the Starbase facility in Boca Chica, Texas. These tests demonstrated a new and successful approach to controlled flight, validating the vehicle's design and proving that Starship can fly through the subsonic phase of entry, relight its engines, and flip itself to a vertical configuration for landing. In this case, Starship may reach orbital velocity, but since there'll be no circularization burn, it'll re-enter without a retro burn or landing burn. It's a safe choice as they don't need to rely on restarting Starship's engines at all during the flight. For Booster 7, it'll be dumped in the ocean as the original plan. And here's a rough timeline for each aspect of Starship's orbital flight test. Propellant loading begins at T minus 1 hour and 39 minutes. Then at T minus 0, SpaceX says, excitement guaranteed. That will certainly be the case. If all goes well, Starship will splash down in the Pacific Ocean at T plus 1 hour and 30 minutes. In short, good luck on the Starship test and thanks for the detailed timeline. I will consider it a success if you get it to the other side of Max-Q okay, but please, please, what are the target perigee and apogee height values at Starship engine cutoff? In any case, Starship is coming soon. In the meantime, be sure to keep an eye out for the Falcon Heavy as well. Serious rocket power is on view in a Florida SpaceX hangar. On Tuesday, April 11th, SpaceX showcased its Falcon Heavy rocket ahead of its scheduled April 18th launch from NASA's Kennedy Space Center on Florida's Space Coast. Images of the massive rocket shared by SpaceX on Twitter include a close-up of the 27 Merlin engines that will bring the booster into space and a long shot of the trio of Falcon 9 derived cores near an open door. This SpaceX Falcon Heavy mission is set to send a Viasat 3 broadband communications satellite to orbit as the first of a three part constellation. Also on board will be a small communications satellite called Arcturus, operated by California based Astronus according to the Kennedy Space Center's Visitor Center. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket, the world's most powerful booster, made its debut flight on February 6th of 2018. Famously, it carried a Tesla car, or Roadster, I should say, and a mannequin into space in front of live cameras. There was a three-year gap between missions that ended in November of 2022, caused primarily by customer delays in getting their payloads ready for liftoff. The latest Falcon Heavy mission, its fifth 
lifted off in January 2023 and began a classified mission for the US Space Force called USS F-67. A few other rideshare satellites also went to space during the flight. The trio of Falcon Heavy first stage boosters are designed to be reusable, but not all missions do so due to fuel requirements, among other parameters. On this mission, however, all three boosters will crash into the ocean. The Falcon Heavy's first stage Merlin engines created more than 5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, according to its SpaceX specifications page. The rocket was the most powerful currently operating until NASA's Space Launch System carried the Artemis 1 moon mission aloft on November 16th of 2022. And for our final update, the James Webb Space Telescope has recently captured colorful, never-before-seen details in one of the most well-observed remnants of an exploded star. The glowing gas and dust of Cassiopeia A are all remains of a star that exploded in a supernova, and its light reached Earth for the first time 340 years ago. It's the youngest known supernova remnant in our galaxy, which is why the celestial object has been studied by a multitude of ground and space-based telescopes. Cassiopeia A is located 11,000 light years away in the Cassiopeia constellation, and the remnant stretches for 10 light years. Insights from Cass A, as the remnant is also known by, allow scientists to learn more about how stellar explosions occur. Astronomers turned the Webb telescope and its instruments in the direction of Cass A to see if the observatory's infrared capabilities could pick up anything other telescopes have missed. Infrared light is invisible to the human eye, allowing Webb to spy on otherwise invisible aspects of the universe. Cas A represents our best opportunity to look at the debris field of an exploded star and run a kind of stellar autopsy to understand what type of star was there beforehand and how that star exploded, said Danny Milosavljevic, assistant professor at Purdue University and principal investigator of the Webb program that captured the new observations in a statement. Webb's new infrared image of Cas A has been translated into visible light so the human eye can see the remnant's colors. Red and orange light on the remnant's exterior indicates warm dust, where material ejected from the star before it exploded exploded, colliding with surrounding gas and dust. Inside the bubble-like structure of the remnant, bright pink light can be seen along with features that resemble clumps and knots. This material came from the exploded star and includes glowing heavy elements like argon, neon, and oxygen. A bright green loop along the right side of the bubble also has captured the interest of researchers. We've nicknamed it the Green Monster in honor of Fenway Park in Boston. If you look closely, you'll notice that it's pockmarked with what looks like many bubbles, said Milosavljevic. The shape and complexity are unexpected and challenging to understand. The team is still trying to understand the sources behind all of the different colors in the image. Studying remnants like Cas A can help scientists understand cosmic dust, which is a building block for stars and planets, and how exploded stars release elements crucial for life. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we will see you next time.